What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you a really powerful delay plugin in FL Studio. You guessed it right, it is the Fruity Delay Bank. This plugin has so many cool features in it, and I'm going to show you how you can utilize it. Let's go. Okay, so I've programmed this rather simple synth sound. It's coming from silent, just something really quickly. But I want to add some really nice delay madness to it. And why not just grab that fruity delay bank that's in FL Studio? I haven't used this plugin that much and I really regret it because you can really program some cool delay that's just fluctuating around in the stereo field. So basically this plugin has eight banks where you can program in delays and you have a lot of different controls. So if we take the top up here, you have all these are the different banks and you can enable and disable each of the delay unit that you have up here. Then you have uh, the all sample that's basically to improve the filter, maybe also the delays of the plugin. Um, you can look it up on the manual. It says what it actually does, but it's, it's mainly for the filters, it says in the manual. Then you have these four macro knobs where you can basically control the dry, wet input volume and the feedback of all of these eight delay banks. I think this is really handy if you want to maybe automate some stuff that could be the width of the delay or the input signal. Instead of having to do this for all of the individual delays, you can do it just as a macro knob. That's pretty handy. And then you have like all the different um, features that you might find in like a regular delay plugin, but also some other cool bits as well. So let's just jump into it and try to create a really cool delay, basically. So we enable this delay one, and then you can go down here to the time knob down here to select the timing. So let's just play some volume. So this is the normal uh, feedback mode. You also have the possibility to change like the panning of the input uh, volume and also the volume level of the input. Then you have a pre-delay filter. You can also set it for post-delay. I don't use this as, as much. I rather use the feedback filter over here to sculpt the, the, the delay, like the feedbacks of the delay, basically. So what we can play around with here is that we can try to pan this to, like hard pan it to the left. And then I want to put this to... I think this is fine. So I'm just going to pan this hard to the left. I'll turn up the volume a little bit. Then I'm also trying to offset the delay just a little bit, just to create a little bit more of a stereo effect. I'm also trying to play with the stereo separation, which is the slider down here. Basically, a lot of these sliders and knobs, just try to change them and listen to how it sounds. Um, I'm not quite sure like how each knob and slider works. Try to look up on the manual if you want something more explained in depth. But basically, this is just separating the, the delays a little bit. Okay, so let's move on to the feedback filter. I love to use low pass filtering on my delays. So basically just cutting away some of the, the high end frequencies of the delays. And um, it just basically tucks them a little bit more in the back, in my opinion. Then we can turn up the gain, also a little bit of resonance. Let's hear how it sounds. So you can, you can really hear it when I'm opening or closing the cutoff filter, that if I put it all the way to the right, you can hear a lot of the delays. But if I put it more to the left, it gets filtered, low pass filtered a little bit. Okay, and then we have like something really cool, which is the grain delay feature where you can basically divide the, the feedback, the delays into small bits, small audio bits. And then you can also change like how the envelope is being behaved. Like basically these knobs, these sliders, you just need to mess around with them to get a really cool sound. So if we just pay attention here. So you might hear that it's starting to like flutter a little bit. I 
around here. It actually sounds pretty nice to me. And yeah, then we also have where you can control the output volume and also the panning of the output. Like with all this stuff happening, all this applied, you can also control it a little bit more. But I don't use that much. I'm rather use the panning in here for the feedback. Now we can basically try to jump into other the other delay banks here and try to do something because I want to have like a really crazy delay that has like long delay times, short delay times, something that's panned hard to the right, to the left, sits in the mono. So basically it transformed this uh, rather simple synth uh, line into something really crazy. So I think I will actually try to mirror the, these settings in the bank two, but then I want to pan it to the right. And I don't think that there is like a copy function. So I'm just going to try to see if I can nail it. This was put to low pass and I think the cutoff around here, gain and resonance. I think this was around here. To me, it's, it actually doesn't matter that much that it's completely the same. I'm, I'm all up for those like more random results. Uh, so that doesn't bother me that much. Also gonna put this like this offset right here, but then I'm gonna put it to the left. Check it again. We can also put up stereo. Separation. Yeah, let's ha have a listen. So I really like like those fluttering sounds from the cranes. And if you were to like, if you don't want these to be so audible, you can basically just jump into these two different banks and then we can just turn down the volume a little bit of the output. Okay. So now we want to jump into number three and I want this to be at the, the time four to zero. And then I want it to be a ping pong delay. And then also like the low pass filter, but not so close, a bit of gain. Then I don't, I don't want to have any grains. This acts more like as that main delay that really drives the groove um, because it's synced. But then you have like these like grainish grain style delays that's being panned to the right and to the left that really creates a cool texture. Really love that. So let's jump into number four. So we could try to make this maybe even like, I'm going to try to put it to seven. I'm going to offset a little bit, up the stereo separation. And I think panning, trying to pan it a little bit to the left. And for the feedback filter, let's just try a band pass. And set it around here. So listen. That sounds pretty cool. So also one really cool tip is that if you want to hear what's actually being do, done in different modules, you can just turn them on or off really quickly because now I can hear what's happening in number four uh, because I just turned off the other three. And then we can actually move on to number five. And I think we're also going to try to mimic this, like put this to a seven. Going to pan this to a little bit to the right and let's just see offset the, the other way, a little bit of stereo separation. And then we're also going to use a bandpass filter here. And it could be cool to just put another value. Up with the gain. Let's just have a listen. This is sounding so full, in my opinion. It's like it's really cool that you can do this in like an like a stock <laughs> plugin from FL Studio. Okay, so let's move on to number six. I think I will go and have some really short delay times now. So let me just turn all of these off. Something like this. Put this to ping pong mode. And then we're gonna try to pan the input signal so we get a more like stereo ping pong effect. And then I'm also going to use the low pass filter. A little bit more feedback. And let's try to see if we can add some grains to it.
turn down the volume a little bit of the output. Really solid, really solid. Okay, so the number seven and number eight, I really want those to be unsynced. So I'm gonna put this to maybe like 141. And it's gonna be to a normal feedback. And we are almost gonna pan these uh, hard to the left and right, but not all the way. So I think at 60% to the left, and then we're going to use a bandpass, this one. And I'm going to increase the input volume a little bit for this one. And then we can put the offset a little bit this way. And then we're going to go to number eight, the last one, and basically put this to maybe 143, and pan it the opposite way with 60% to the right. Also put this to a bandpass filter, put a little bit of gain, and I think the cut off around here. So also one thing that I forgot to mention is that these numbers that you have up here is actually the slope of uh, the filter. So you can have, a, I think it's a 12 dB slope, a 24 dB slope, and then a 48 dB slope. Look it up in the manual because I'm not quite sure like how much it is. Actually, I have it open here. So number one is 12 dB per octave. Number two is 24 dB per octave. And number three is 36 dB per octave. So basically I like how uh, steep the slope is, but I usually just have it at one. So let's see how this sounds. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's just enable everything. And we can try to turn on the oversample. It doesn't make that much like a difference, but just a little bit. If your CPU is struggling, you might just need to turn this off. Perhaps if it's a little bit too harsh on your CPU. For me, it's not that harsh. This is basically like how I would set this up. I'm, I will just play around with them and just mute the individual ones and then slowly enable all the other ones to see if they work together. And um, then one other thing is that when you have created this, just save the preset. Like go up here and save the preset as, so you don't have to go back and start from scratch because it can take a little bit of time to set this up. But once you have set it up, you can really create some custom delays that sounds pretty awesome. Now we have like eight different delays rocking on this simple synth line. And I think it's actually pretty cool. Um, so one other thing that I want to mention is that these um, macros up here could be pretty cool for automation purposes. So if I just play it, you can hear like when I just, just decrease the input level, the delay effect uh, disappears. So. This automating this knob could be really cool for doing like uh, automation up to like a build up or for a breakdown or just creating some variations basically in your track. And so you, I definitely recommend you to try to automate some of these knobs up here. And so one thing that we can go to is go to the mixer channel. And I actually put up a fruity parametric EQ2 uh, after the delays just to remove low end. That might could have been created by the delays. Then we can actually try to check in the stereo field. I'm just using the OSO 9 imager just to see how everything sits. You can see like it's creating those really nice like stereo effects to the synth line. I think this is pretty cool. Um, let me just see if, if I just turn off the delay bank. This is just my synth. I 
I think it's pretty cool. Like it's pretty, pretty awesome. So let's just hear like together with this small track that I made. Yeah, you can see if, if you actually have like a MIDI keyboard, you can try to play like different notes that are being fed into this delay. And because some of the delays are unsynced and like it just sounds really nice and like moving and alive. And yeah, I really definitely encourage you to try out this fruity delay bank for yourself. It's pretty awesome. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would mean so much to me if you smash that like button or even subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss any future videos on the channel. I have also launched a Discord server for producers. It's a place where we can share our track ideas, get feedback, provide feedback. It's generally just a cool place to hang out and talk about music and stuff. And I really want you to get involved if you want to. You can join the Discord with the link in the description down below. If you want to support this channel even further, you can go and browse some of my sample packs and preset packs on my web shop. The link is also in the description down below. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, peace.